Hey everybody, thanks for checking out another video. So in this video, I want to go over my passion project, my what I would consider like the ultimate React project. Uh, well, it just happens to be in React, but one of the ultimate browser projects, JavaScript projects, is this idea of an OS, a desktop environment. Uh, I've talked about it a lot on my channel if you want to check out some of my other videos. And one specifically that I wanted to mention actually was uh, this video that I made exactly a year ago called uh, One Year of Live Coding My OS in the Browser. I made this December 25th, which was like uh, today, a year ago, <laughs> 2021. And basically it's been another year and I've got my desktop environment in the browser still. I've added a ton of features since then. And I kind of wanted to just go over what I've added in, in 365 days basically, because I've still been working on it. And this is like a big passion project of mine. And I even, I've got some other side projects in the, the far, in the not too distant future that are gonna kind of build on top of this. Like this is almost like, the OS layer, and then I can kind of build apps on top of my pretend OS, and you can come to my website and see these other app side projects that I have planned that are much longer periods, possibly. I mean, this will continue as well, so they're all going to be going forever, but let's just get into it. So one of the first big things that I, I wanted to change, and you can kind of see it right here, is the fact that these two icons are over here. Now I can position the icons, so I can move these over to here, I can move this one here. And there's a grid system basically, and you refresh and it'll stay like that. That was one thing I really wanted to kind of uh, make it more authentic for the browser, uh, or not just for the browser, but just for this desktop environment. Before that, you couldn't do that basically. I, I had sorting before uh, like that, which you can still do. And if you refresh, it'll stay like that. Or if you go to this restart here, it'll shut down. It'll reset back to how I, that's my preference when people come to my site. So that was a cool one to do. Another one, this was based on request, was like when you open up a window here is that you can drag it off the screen now. Before people weren't able to do that and it was kind of annoying. So I just made some rules with the windows to make sure that if it if it's gonna mess with these buttons or your ability to move it, then it basically doesn't move. But as long as you stay within like certain bounds, like the, the window can move there. But if I try to move it out here, it's like no, and it just resets on me. So that was kind of my little tweak on it. And it does, it does make it feel a lot more free. And when you open up a window on like mobile or something, because this is a mobile friendly website, dustinbrett.com, by the way, running uh, Daedal OS is the name of my uh, browser desktop environment uh, in the browser. That's what I call it. And it's gotten a lot more stars too. Uh, in just in, in like the, like I say, it's been a year here. I, the stars are in the way of my little uh, picture here, but it's 5.9. Uh, or no, you can just see it right here too. Yeah. So 5.9. Uh, nine. That's pretty good. 5.9 thousand uh, compared to, I don't know, it was like 2,000 a year ago or something like that. So I'm pretty proud about that as well. Um, but yeah, so th th this was a, a feature that they recommended on there in the issue. So I did that. Another cool one here is dynamic uh, icons. I've added a lot of dynamic icons. One example of them being, if you go to picture folders here, you see these little, there's previews of what pictures are in the folders now. And that's dynamic as well. So let's say I make a folder here, new folder open that up and let's just put a few of my pictures in there. Let's put a, my wedding, one of my wedding pictures in here and one of my tattoo pictures here, my compass, close this. Now, if we refresh this here, refresh the page maybe even, there we go. So you see now the next time you visit, it actually makes the little short, um, the little icons right there, which is also something that Windows did. So that was a fun little one to do. And for that one, I actually used the same thing that I'm using for when you uh, hover over the taskbar and you see this little preview here. It's called HTML to image. And I've actually recently been able to contribute to it as well. I don't know. My picture might be somewhere here in the, oh, that's the used by contributors here. There's only 38. So I might be somewhere in here now. Let's see if I'm, I've snuck my way in. I didn't expect it to take so long to load. Maybe just take my word for it. I mean, I think I just did a PR like rec just quite recently. It might be the last PR that was merged. Yeah, here it is right here. So I've added the ability to do video capture and iframe as well. That was something that was missing before. So now when I open up a video here, and if I hover over here, you can see that it actually can animate down there. Before it didn't do that. Same with this here. This is actually an iframe, this window. So if I hover over it, it's got some abilities, but it's actually missing some stuff. It has some problems with CSS and with images. So I'm kind of working on a follow-up PR that'll fix that, hopefully, in the near future. Another one I'm really proud of, and this took a lot of time, was getting executable icons. So if you go to this game here, ski32.exe, that icon is actually coming right from the executable file. And for that, I actually used another open source resource called uh, Node.js Library Editing Window Resource Data. Uh, it actually works in the browser too, resedit.js. And I was able to use this to essentially, within exe files, you can extract out the icons. 
and and then I can just use it there. So if you were to ever put, get, just get any random executable file, I actually have an example here. Let me find one. Uh, it's called icon. Here it is here. Drag it onto the desktop. So this one there, you saw for, if you see for a second, it flashed not knowing what it was. And if we move it to another folder, I think it'll flash again. Oh, actually, I guess it didn't, or it just does it so fast that I guess you don't notice it. But anyways, this is another executable that it gets the icon for. And also I can show it another way is another thing that I've added is a uh, 7-zip support. Um, and 7-zip is, is a very well-known unzip zipping utility. And they have a, a WebAssembly version. So I've got that in the browser now. So now it basically supports almost every format is ex ex uh, extractable, including EXEs. So if you right-click an EXE here, you can actually extract an EXE. And you can see some of the resource files. And you might even be able to see the icon somewhere in here. It's a version file. Uh, here's possibly the icon. That's a cursor file. Uh, oh, man, there's a lot of folders in here. Oh, there was one that's called icon. Maybe it's in there. Yeah, there we go. So there was the icons there. And in this case, it, it got I got to it a different way by using the 7-zip extracting. But I also have this res edit uh, method here for getting the just the icon that I need specifically. So that was another cool feature that I added. Uh, and then another one, too, that you could see when I opened up the videos here, if you see it animating here, that is from something called gif.js. So that allows me to do, so for new, even new videos too, like I actually have an example video here I'll drag on. So let me drag it. There's a video right there. It makes an initial thumbnail and then it'll actually in the background create a GIF. And as you see now, now it animates it. So it took, takes the video and makes a GIF with gif.js. And then the next time you visit the site, it actually is already cached. So now you've got this animated icon. If you open that, that's actually the video and it'll play whatever the video happens to be. So that was another cool one. So that's some of the dynamic icons I got. Another cool one I got, I know I've had Doom on here before, but if you see here when we play Doom now, let me just turn this down a tiny bit here. It's a little too loud. So we play a little uh, Doom here. And then let's say I just close it and it saves it. It actually saves a snapshot of when that was uh, running. And you see here in the folder here, there's actually a snapshot of that Doom that it ran. So that's another thing that's happening from that HTML to image. And then I've got dynamic icons for these little snapshot files because it remembers the, the save data for, and I have that for a lot of different things that it can, that it can run like a different emulator and ROMs and uh, the virtual machines as well. When I run the x86 emulator, uh, going to a different uh, thing that I've added quite a bit to, I've, I've ha shown this before WebAmp or this Winamp emulator, but I, I liked it so much. I just had to add a bunch of stuff to it. So one thing I've got, I mean, I already showed the skins before. That's nothing new there. But one change with it is once you've set the skin, let's say I close Winamp or, do, or don't close, it doesn't matter. I refresh the page. I come back another day. Now it actually remembers the skin that was set. That's one nice thing. Another big one that I did, I mean, that one wasn't really big. The one that is big here is now I have streaming music support. Uh, currently, I'm, I'm one of the ones I use is Soma FM because it uh, works fine through the Coors browsers or whatever, that kind of thing. And as you can see here, it can play streaming music. And then now that it's got stream music, another thing I've added is this thing called Milk Drop. It's actually being powered by another li library called Butter Churn, but it has all the old Milk Drop vir music virtual visualizations, which are pretty awesome. And then the, the biggest part that I do all the time is I right click here and you put it in desktop mode and then it can become the wallpaper. And that's usually what I have on my computer when I'm working most days is I listen to these streams, which are actually the same ones from 20 years ago on Soma FM, these groove salads. And I just listen to those. I'll stop this now, though. It's probably rough on the the video streaming, all those uh, pixels moving around. But th that's like a, a really cool one that I like all the time. So that's just a practical thing you can do. And speaking of wallpapers, last time a year ago, I watched and I was surprised that I actually didn't have any customizable wallpapers. Now I have plenty of them. So if you open up it now and you right click here and you go background, um, there's all of these ones are animated and this first one's not animated. This first one is called APOD. It's the astronomy photograph of the day. If you click it here, it's just whatever the astronomy photograph of the day is. And any day you come back and you refresh, it'll be a different photo as well. Uh, and then the animated ones, these are pretty cool. There's this one here called coastal landscape. This comes from, uh, from a shader toys website. And I was able to just kind of add this here. And I thought it kind of had a windows XP appeal to it. Uh, this one Hexelis was another really cool one. And this is almost using like a machine learning neural net kind of thing. Not really, but kind of in a little bit way, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the matrix ones are really cool. I got the matrix in 2D and I also have it in a, like a three dimensional way. And then the original one that I had before was called waves. So that one's still there. 
Um, some other things that I said I wanted to add that I ended up adding are being able to convert videos. So if you see here, if I were to right click this, this is a video and I can right click and then press convert and I can pick all these different video formats and I can say like AVI. Uh, and it's actually converting video as a blocking operation currently. So it actually kind of like freezes the app as it's doing it. But as you see, it did happen. And some things didn't freeze. That's another cool thing. As you see, the wallpaper didn't freeze. The clock didn't freeze. Those are because they're actually using this thing called off-screen canvas, and they're running on separate threads. That's another. That's a new thing for the clock. Before the clock, it, it used to kind of run on a web worker, but it wasn't using off-screen canvas, so the rendering would, would have frozen. And as you can see here, it, it creates an AVI. So now from that MP4, it was able to make an AVI. This is happening through FFmpeg. Uh, and it can FFmpeg can also do that for audio as well. I think I have an MP3 in here. Yeah, I've got the the web amp. You know, it really whips the llamas song. You know that one. So if we uh, right click that, I can do convert to, and I can put like wave or something like that. And again, it's FFmpeg, pretty fast that one. I mean, it's only a five second audio clip, so not too surprising. Uh, and I've also used another tool called Image Magic to to be able to convert pictures too. So let's say I pick a picture here. This is a JPEG. I can right click it, and I can say convert to. Uh, like a bitmap or something like that if I want to. And there you go. It made a bitmap. Four megabytes instead of 110 kilobytes. Big difference. But that's another cool one I can do. And I actually can do spreadsheets too. So I can just drag an example spreadsheet on here. I actually don't have a spreadsheet viewer right now. But I have the ability to convert it. from. So this one's an XLS. I could convert it to CSV or a numbers file. Let's say CSV. Now when it's a CSV, it's a little easier to open in like Monaco. And we can see the data there. As an XLS, it's probably not readable. Yeah, it's a little more. Well, you can see some of it in there, but it's a bit more gibberish. Anyways, that's another one I added. I also didn't have a Markdown viewer before. Now I have a Markdown viewer. So if you open up like the credits or something that you can see there. Before, I was only able to open it in Monaco. So I had to demo it like that. But there's also this credits one here. Um, I've also added search. That was something I wanted to add for a while. So now if you open up a file explorer, there's also the ability to search here. So if I... Wanted to do like when I was in Paris or something, I just type Paris and it's like you can see there about, oh, okay, there's the story about Paris and oh, here's this picture from the Louvre and it's like, oh, maybe I want to just see like, where is that picture? Maybe type Louvre. Oh, there's one called Louvre right there. You open it. Oh yeah, that's the picture right there. Oh no, that's not the right one. Well, let's say if I just want to click from the article, I can open up another picture there. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I had that before, but anyways, just as, as another demo, the search is useful that way. The search can do a lot of cool stuff. And it's actually dynamic search. So like this file here, we just made that. But if I do file, what is it? File underscore, oh, maybe it's not actually working. Well, typically it does, but maybe it's because I don't think it indexes CSV files. Some files it does, and I'm gonna add more in the future. So that's something to keep an eye on. Another feature I wanted to add was the ability to have IRC, and I've managed to get that. I, I use this tool called Kiwi IRC. But it's basically an IRC client, and it works via WebSockets. So without any backend, I'm able to connect to some like pretty popular servers, like this one here, Libera. I mean, how many users are on here? Like 43,000 or something. If I go to Channels and press Refresh here, you can you can basically go onto like the Linux IRC channel here and just chat. And this is like in my browser basically, and you're doing a, a conversation in IRC. There, I'm in that Linux channel right here. If we make this bigger, we might be able to see the users, or is it hidden? See, there's the users there. So yeah, that's like, uh, I mean, back in the day was IRC, but this is like live chat in the thing, and I didn't have to do any backend stuff for this, so I thought that was kind of cool. Another one is emulators. I've added so many emulators because of uh, this one emulator JS tool that I found. So now I basically can emulate almost every kind of <laughs> ROM. I've got some free ones here, uh, like Sega Genesis or Super Nintendo, N64, uh, Nintendo DS. Uh, I don't think Dreamcast, but just so many other ones. This is a DS game. Um, this is an NES game, and I can actually launch multiple ones at a time. Oh, no, no, they, they actually can only run one at a time with this emulator, uh, which is still fine. This is Super Nintendo. So you can just see there's tons of different ones there, and you can drag in new ROMs. I don't have any good examples right now, but you can just pick any, any ROMs you pick from any sites. They almost can play on this thing now. Uh, I've also got JS Paint on here. This Someone makes this really good replica of JS Paint. And I've actually been able to get it to work with most of the features. So let's say we have a picture here, uh, one of my wedding pictures here. I want to take the, let's take that bitmap and just put it on here. You see it can load right there. And then I can kind of just draw on this one piece here and I can go to file and I can set as my wallpaper. And you can see there it sets as the wallpaper. I can even uh, do show the desktop here and we can see that it added the wallpaper there with the right drawing. And we can reset it all and kind of start all fresh on that. 
Uh, for PDFs, I've added a little bit of features. If you open up the PDF viewer now, it reads the title from the PDF. It also has the ability to download and print. Those were some features that kind of made it look more like the Chrome uh, one as well. I've also added some cool ports uh, from that people have made. One of them for like a, like a mind sweep, mind uh, craft. Is it Minecraft? Yeah, Minecraft port. There's this classy cube one. Uh, this is kind of a cool one here. Let me just... I mean, if you know Minecraft, I know it a little bit. I'm not really... It was a little bit before my time, but it's kind of a cool one. Uh, and an even cooler one that's like right in my time that I added recently was Quake Quake 3. Uh, if you know about Quake 3, I mean, people have heard of it. It's pretty popular. And basically, this is like a full-on port of Quake 3 that you can play. So I thought that was pretty cool. And I can actually resize the window to make it a lot bigger here. Oh, there we go. Oh, shoot myself there. But it's just like full Quake 3 with several maps. I mean, it's full in that it's like playable. It's definitely not full in a lot of other ways. But Quake 3 was open sourced a long time ago. And this is essentially a WebAssembly version. And it works just the same. And I remember it. And I'm actually working on the ability to load config files. Because it, I actually do have access to the config files. But I just... Uh, still early days with this game. So I'm still kind of playing with it. But that was a really fun one that I added. Another classic one that I used to play that I've added as well is DX Ball. If people remember DX Ball, some people may. But this is a this is a pretty fun one, anyways, and it's pretty much exactly the way I remember it. So I thought that was a cool one as well. That's another nostalgia one. And I've also added just a ton of other shareware games because I think the shareware games are kind of free reign to to be able to share. So if you go into DOS bundles here, I've got a bunch more now. Like Sky Roads, Raptor, Commander Keen 1, Duke Nukem 2, and Duke Nukem 1, actually, instead of just Duke Nukem 3D. Because the first Duke Nukems was, were actually really cool, and they're totally different than the third one. But people forget about them a little bit. I've also added some different Flash games here. If we go to Flash Files, uh, basically I just added this extra Portals one. I remember I used to play this one, but I'd forgotten at the time, so I was able to find that one. I thought that was kind of a cool one to be able to share. Um, I've also added the ability to, to spawn sheep. There's a little Easter egg one where if you click the clock seven times, you can get one. Uh, there it is. But there's also, if you just open up a terminal. So an another cool thing, you can right click in a lot of places and go open terminal here. And then I can type sheep to get one sheep. Or if you want to do, let's say a hundred sheep, you just do sheep and a hundred and you can get a hundred sheep basically. And they'll just come at you from every direction. So that's another fun one as well. Um, Vim, I've added Vim for people that want to do vim instead so let's say that same credits file we open it instead of monaco we'll open it in vim and there you go you can just kind of do however vim is done i don't even barely know i mean i know how to quit it but i don't know much about vim other than that um i've also got some keyboard shortcuts now um so like if you open it in full screen you can actually press the windows key now it'll open the start menu another cool one is i got shift uh, r or was it shift control shift r opens up the run dialog. And you can also open it from right clicking the start menu and pressing run. And the run dialog is pretty handy because you can just type a bunch of stuff in there. One such example is I've actually added IPFS file support. So let's say in the run dialog, you can actually paste in an IPFS protocol, like IPFS colon forward forward slash URL, and just it'll run. Basically, assuming I copied the whole thing, I actually didn't copy it properly. Let me copy the whole thing. And it's basically a Van Gogh HTML, I press OK. And it's going to download it off the gateway. And there we go. And it, op it knows to open it in the browser. And it actually put the file on the desktop. And it, the browser has IPFS support. So you can actually open up IPFS files there. And if you open up in the run dialog, uh, like a video URL, it'll open in the video player. So that's another cool thing. I've also added a lot of picture support too, like different file types. Like let's say TIFF right here. That's not something normally supported by some browsers. But I support TIFF files. I also support these new QOI files, quite okay image format. That's another one not so commonly supported. Um, just, yeah, things like that, cursor and, and uh, any files, like the animated cursor files, support those as well. Um, and then, yeah, I just have done a ton of performance improvements and stuff, the start menu and the file explorer, and just everything is, is a lot more quick. So, yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to make it too long of a video, so hopefully you get a cool idea of the kind of improvements I've made over the year. There's been a lot of different features. Uh, so if you like this video, please throw me a like. If you want to motivate me or just like follow what I'm doing, please subscribe and you'll see more of these videos because I hope for like a year three, a year four, a year five, and I got some cool side projects in, in the go for 2023. I'm going to do a, another video in the very near future where I talk about those, like get much more artificial intelligence stuff and getting stuff into the OS. Uh, so please stay tuned for that. And thanks for checking out this video and see you in the next one.